Hey, and we are the coalition. It's a late night here at Woonsocket City Hall. Uh, the town Council has just left after a special meeting. Uh, a great deal of the meeting after some initial, if you will, book housekeeping uh, memorandums was in executive session. So as a result, uh, Councilman John Ward, who is well known to us, uh, I'm going to ask a couple of very broad questions. He'll, as a master of this, as a Zen master, as a Jedi master of this, he will only answer mm -hmm. what's, what's appropriate. <laughs> um, Councilman Ward, I guess the, the question is, what's the next step? Um, well, first off, this was yeah, a preliminary yeah, conversation and quiet making inquiry yeah. into procedures that took place over the, over the course of safe. the time associated with this purchase of the property on Menden Road, and we were only speaking with the directors. We were not in communication with the mayor um, about this or anything to do with relationships and such as that. It was more procedural collection of information. Um, as people may be aware, we have been provided over time many of the documents associated with this and they will be made public and will be posted to the city's website as soon as it is possible to put up a link and dump all of the PDF files into the, the website so that people can look at them and see what's taken place over time. Um, what we did have was a conversation with employees that um, involved motive, you know, what prompted actions, what they believed they were doing at the time, and, and it is something that was having to do with job performance and it's really not discussable in public, mm -hmm. only that it did not, I don't think it, it did anything more than inform us a little bit about some of the inside processes that occur in City Hall that were informative and constructive and helpful in us deciphering the puzzle we call the Menden Road land purchase. Woonsocket is a not just a city; it's a tribe, and you know. And, and there's a lot of admirable traits about that. People, this is a very close knit community. A lot of good comes out of that. Sometimes in very challenging times. At the same time, tribes have a reputation, particularly in Woonsocket. The rumors are flying. We sat out there for an hour or two, and once it became known to people in Woonsocket that we were sitting out there for an hour or two, as you can imagine, half of Woonsocket reached out to us for for. With rumors, speculation, generally speaking, get a broad, it's very broad. Have there been any personal changes that you can talk about, or are you able to say there have been no personal changes? I can say with confidence that there, with absolute assurance to anybody, that there is there is no personnel changes that have taken place again related to anything that occurred here this evening, and that um, this was again very preliminary. Mm -hmm. uh, there are going to be further and deeper questions because just in the last couple of days, we've learned about more documentation, mainly in the area of communications among various parties and email exchanges mm -hmm. that have occurred over time that um, are important to this question. And there is still the question of having, having a, a, uh, a, a conversation or report or investigation of the occurrences as it relates specifically to the mayor. She has not been available these last couple of weeks, and um, we have not had the opportunity to actually deal with this issue with her. But with the staff, it was, again, preliminary fact-finding. Uh, we may take further action. We have um, passed a resolution to authorize an investigation. So there's more to be done to lay groundwork for any process that takes place related to personnel or related to appointed or elected officials. And I, I hate to sound like I'm using legalese, but I'm I'm trying to be cautious and make sure I don't right don't tip the hand of and and dishonor the the uh, protections that are afforded in the closed meeting, especially to people who have their employment here. No, absolutely. And and again, it's critical for people who listen to this to understand that the rules surrounding executive session, the secrecy, the spirit of it, are very very strict. And that's designed to prevent misinformation and character assassination. And, uh, you know, it's a sacred trust between employees and the city of Woonsocket. Of course, there are a number of sacred trusts between employees and the cities of Woonsocket. <laughs> um, the, the, the other question, is, uh, and I thought about how to phrase this, as of 11.04 on November 8th, Lisa Baldelli Hunt is still the mayor of the city of Woonsocket. To the best of my knowledge, absolutely. Okay. Now, and again, these are... Um, uh, I, I do want to say one thing, though, about 
about the, the situation with the employees coming here, too, that every person that came before us this evening are all in the unusual situation that, that certain employees in this city live under, which is called uh, an appointment as a director, which serves at the pleasure of the mayor. Mm -hmm. And so every word they say um, is to serve at the pleasure of the mayor. And so you can, you can collect information, and there are... There are statements made that are all have to be measured in the context of serving at the pleasure of the mayor. Mm -hmm. And um, by that, I am simply saying other employees in the system are protected by either civil service rights or collective bargaining agreements. And there are no such protections for directors who are simply there to serve at the pleasure of the mayor, which some may interpret as doing the bidding of a mayor. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to necessarily characterize it that way because all of them should be bound by the charter and our ordinances, and our our um, our state laws and state constitution. So it's it's the challenge you face when dealing with people who are under the gun and in a situation that puts them in a precarious position with their employment. They are not, in my understanding, under oath when they have these conversations. We with were you. not. We were not performing that level of an, of an investigation. We have the right to. Mm -hmm. We have a right to pass a resolution to initiate an investigation where we can subpoena records and we can take oaths and they can have legal representation, et cetera, et cetera. We haven't taken it to that level because we're dealing with the employees currently in the hope of having a trust relationship where they can reveal to us what their actions and motivations behind them were. And am I correct in saying that the, the, what we've talked about the other day in terms of a, um, um, the, the, the participation of the citizenry, a, 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 a request has to be made in excess of 50 signatures in order to prompt that level of investigation? It, it, well, no. No, we can do an investigation as a council. In terms of the specific uh, authority for a removal from office for an elected or an appointed official, um, when you read it in the charter, a council person or a petition by a complaint signed by 50 electors, but it can only be for one of for one or more of six very specific reasons that are listed in the charter. We have a recall provision where you can initiate a recall petition too, but there's no requirement that it be subject to the limitations of reasons for removal. It can be simply because you. Uh, the population has become un un dissatisfied with the person in office mm -hmm. who was elected. This is about removal for cause. Mm -hmm. And that's not the investigation that we're authorized to do. It's an actual complaint for removal, which can come from a council person or from, um, from 50 electors of the city, at least on a complaint. Mm -hmm. um, and even, even with the last cycle when we did this a year ago, you know, there were nine or seven separate complaints filed, mm -hmm. and only four of them actually rose to the level of being voted on as sufficient to merit removal from office. It wasn't. It wasn't that everything was considered simply considered subject to a removal raising itself to that level just because it was filed. It's not something that simple. You have to consider. Um, what the matter is and where it comes from and the severity of the impact on the community and the severity of the impact on the on the um the quality of governance that we're providing to the public that have elected us with trust to do the job correctly and you know as i said this i said it before this is not an issue that was really a disagreement with the council or anything it was more of an action by the administration that was a violation of the public's trust that is spelled out in rules governed by our city charter. Councilman John Ward, thank you again for staying and thank you for your continued input and quite frankly, plain spoken explanations that incorporate the technical issues surrounding the situation we find well, ourselves I in. I want to protect the integrity of the process. Thank you very much. Thank you.